I'm going to tell you something. You've got to have a tremendous work ethic to be successful in here. In other words, and you can relate to this, you've got to have a lot of dog in you. <laughs> you really do, man, if you want to be successful because it's, it's going to be a lot of trying time. So you have to have a tremendous work ethic. But you've got to have faith. Faith without works is dead. You hear it all the time. You go to church and you learn all these scriptures, but then you don't apply none of them to your life. You are looking at a man who has made the simple application of three or four scriptures and maxed them out to get here. I maxed out three, four scriptures to get here. I kid you not. I'll share them with you if you want to hear about them, but I maxed out three, four scriptures to get here. I'd love to tell you I'm the funniest person ever lived, but I ain't. Richard Pryor got that. I'd love to tell you I'm the greatest entertainer, but I ain't. Michael Jackson was that. I got all that, but they gone. So I probably am. But listen, man, but I, I gotta tell you something. If you could get a couple of things from me, if you could gather this piece of information. Albert Einstein said once, he said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Now, I want you to get this now. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Because if you think about it, everything you have, everything we have in this world, somebody imagined it. It's your ima imagination is tremendous. Somebody was sitting on the phone one day talking with a cord to the wall and said, man, I wish I could just go outside with this phone. Everybody in here got a cell phone. Somebody imagined that. Somebody got tired of riding in a wagon cross country from slavery to freedom. Somebody said, I wish we had something that made these wheels move by themselves. We drive cars. People got tired of driving from New York to LA. Somebody said, I wish we could fly. We got airplanes. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Your real life, the one God really got for you, is in your imagination. It is not in your current situation or your current paycheck. And if you've been living like that, you have then restricted yourself to a commonality that is really not yours. Because what really God got for you is really in your imagination. Now, since there's a lot of church folk in here, let me tie that to a scripture. Because this is when you really start affecting black folk. See, y'all don't really bleed nothing till you tie it to some type of church thing. So let, let's just go on and do that. And once again, before I start this, I am not a pastor or a preacher. So... There is a scripture that Albert Einstein took this quote from. It's like the book, The Secret. The Secret is one of the top selling motivational books ever. But if you read the book, The Secret, it's all biblical. Everything comes from the Bible. You really don't need self-help books. You don't need the magic of thinking big, the power of positive thinking, how to win friends and influence people, think and grow rich, the winner's circle. I've read them all. All of that information is in Proverbs, all of it. But let me give you this scripture. You've all heard this, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So when I told you a minute ago, you got to have a tremendous work ethic, but you got to have a lot of faith. I talk to so many people who get older, like some of us are, and they've lost their faith. Well, faith is really simple. It's the, faith is the substance of things hoped for. All that means is in the beginning, you just hope something pop off. You know, you just kind of hope something happened for you. I was hoping I would get on TV. I wrote it on a piece of paper when I was 10. I want to be on TV. The problem I had when I wrote it at 10 was I suffered from a severe stuttering problem. I could not talk outside of my house. So can you imagine when I wrote on a piece of paper, I want to be on TV and turn that in? The first thing the little boy next, door, next to me asked me, he 10, well, how long is your TV show going to be? Cause you you're going to be on TV all day. But when I wrote it on the paper, it wasn't factual. I was just hoping. You just got to start with the hope. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for. You just hope something, Joe. 
Then what happened is through grace and favor, he give you a couple of them things you hope for, and then you're supposed to start believing then. Because now it turns into faith. But if you take this scripture, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What is the evidence of things not seen? I just told it to you. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. But guess what your imagination really is? It's the evidence of things not seen. Because your imagination, you know why it's the evidence of things not seen? Because you're the only one who can see it. Your imagination is actually God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. The moment you don't believe in your imagination, you negate what he got for you. Your imagination is the preview to life's coming attraction. It is the evidence of things not seen. Because can't nobody see it with you. Your problem is you keep telling your imagination to the wrong people. See, if you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. It's dead. How many times, man, have you had a tremendous idea? Something you thought was the one, and you went and told it to your loved ones and your so-called friends, and they shot it down. I mean, you was convinced that it was just, oh, man, I just came to you. And you told it to me and they shot it down. And you thought since they was your loved ones and they friends and they got your best interests at heart, you believed them. You was wrong. They taught, you let them talk you out of what God got for you. Some of y'all still sitting here with the ambition of opening a business one day, but you scared to go start the business because you got a job and you got bills. Rich people got bills. Everybody got bills. Hell, I got bills. You, you, who, you, everybody owes somebody something. I got something with the bank right now. You're going to let the fact that you got some bills stop you from opening the business, the thing that God didn't put in your imagination, so you're going to squash that because you got bills. Everybody got bills. Your real life is in your imagination. Can, can, you, can, you, can you grab what I'm telling you? So I don't know what you thought I was going to say to you. I'm just a real dude. I don't even have the education you all have. I flunked out of school. I flunk. I ain't got no education. I don't use four-syllable words. The only four-syllable word I know is my bank account. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what I, look, what I'm sharing with you is stuff that everybody can apply today. If you are sitting in here thinking that you're too old to listen to what Steve, hell, I'm 60. I'm 60 years old. I know. I know. I know. You can't believe it. I know. He's so fly. I know. But I'm 60. But I still rely on my imagination. See, if you think you're too old to make it, let me give you a prime example. Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders has been frying chicken his whole life. He was telling everybody he had the best chicken in the world. Ain't nobody believe him. They turned him down everywhere. Colonel Sanders didn't get a franchise till he was in his 60s. Kentucky Fried Chicken sell more chicken than anybody in the world today. So if you're sitting there thinking because you got a little gray on you, and you're too late, as long as God waking you up in the morning, that's the sign that he ain't through with you. So what you tripping for? You sitting up in here like, like God can't do nothing for you because you're 60. Man, you know what I'm asking God for right now? And I'm 60? If you could see my vision board, you would be, you would be blown away. Because I got enough right now. I really know, but I ain't in the need business. I'm in the want business. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting something. Quit going down to these churches y'all sitting up in here going down to, letting, keeping you in these little boxes. God got a big life for you. The only person that ain't get down to look, and I love church. Don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking church. Don't you, don't, don't tweet that. Don't, 
Steve don't care for the church no more. I didn't say that. But don't go down there, memorize all these scriptures, and then don't apply none of them to your life. That's what I'm talking about. Quit going down there just to go and just get a couple of scriptures and apply them to you. Let me give you one that's real simple. See, these, are, these principles of success, they've taken all of these scriptures and they've put them in books and they call them, you know, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. But all these, everything in there is a scripture. They just reworded it because people don't know how to read the Bible. Like, I can't really read the King James Version. I can't. Four verses of that, I go to sleep. Because hence... Furthermore, whatsoever, whosoever. Who, who is you talking about? I need a name, dog. Not, not whomsoever, because I'm thrown off. I didn't do good with reading and comprehension in school. The smallest scripture I ever read changed my life. The scripture real simple. You have not, because you ask not. Do you know? the difference that that could make in your life. I'm just giving you real talk now. I'm just trying to tell you how I got here. See, I, I have no education. I applaud all of you with your education. I was sitting there talking to so many men who have in corporate America and all I, I'm, I'm, I'm in awe of that because I don't have that. But you sit here and you take what you have and it could be so much more if you would ask. See, you have not because you ask not. When the last time you really asked him for something? Or do you keep making requests that's inside the confines of your paycheck? When you gonna get outside of that? Didn't I just tell you God ain't in your paycheck? Didn't I just tell you he ain't in your job title? The life God got for you is in your imagination. Why you still imagining stuff? Why you keep dreaming of a summer home? Why you keep dreaming of retirement, leaving your grandkids money? So I'm at the age now where I think about my grandkids. I got seven TV shows. Dog, I only need one. One show pay me enough money. I need th four for my wife. <laughs> four of them is for Marjorie. The other three is for the grandkids. I just need one. I do not live my life in the confines of what anybody says to me. I let my imagination go, and now imagination is a preview to life's coming attraction. But what that really means is, is God showing you a preview of what he has for you. So now, if you have not cause you ask not, do you understand if you up your ask, he has to up his give? This period, this is simple stuff that anybody can apply. You ain't even got to have no degree to do this. You don't even have to have no money to do this. You can start this today and change your whole game because you're going to need grace and favor anyway. Now, I ain't no preacher, but I, people kill me when they ask me. I was talking to a group of, of white reporters the other day. They kept asking me, how did I make it? And I kept talking about grace and favor. And they kept asking me, who is your agent? I don't know, don't, who the, who? Y'all, why are you skipping over what I'm trying to tell you? You need to dream the faith, and then he put his grace and favor on top it. You gone. But you got to ask for something. If you up your ask, he got to up his guilt, period. You have not because you ask. Now, quit asking God for little bitty stuff. Lord Jesus, help me make my rent. Don't he always? All y'all got somewhere to stay. How about this? Why you keep asking for rent? Why don't you ask for a mortgage? If he gonna give you the money for a place to stay, what difference do it make to God? But if you keep saying rent, ain't he fair? He keep giving you rent. If you ask for a mortgage, he'll give you a mortgage. But you have not cause you ask not. Lord Jesus, help me fix my car so I can make it to work. Why? Do you keep praying over that raggedy car? <laughs> Why don't you ask God for a car that don't need fixing? You know, they roll them off the assembly line every day. How you can't get a new car? How you serve God? How you go to church and you can't get a car? Just a new car. How you can't get that from God? You know, why? Because you ain't asking him. 
You keep asking him for stuff that fit in your paycheck. Your paycheck say a 2015 Lexus, so you go down there and ask him for that. And guess what you get? A 2015 Lexus. You up your ass, he up.